Hey good people, it is Tashara from Politics and Fashion here today with a very exciting video because it doesn't happen a lot on this channel, girl. So grab you a snack and get ready for this collective haul for spring. Now in today's video, you're going to see not just fashion, but also some more lifestyle products as well. I have a little bit of self-care, I have some skincare, and of course we got the fashions, okay? So I'll make sure that all of the timestamps are down below. Feel free to skip around, to skip over the things that may not interest you as much, but stick around for the entire video because I think you guys are going to love it. At the time of me filming this is the Sephora VIB sale or the Beauty Insider sale, I think it's called. Now, I am the 20% off tier, which I think is the Rouge member. I, I spend too much money there. It's basically the member that I am. Um, and it's because not that I'm going to Sephora willy-nilly and just picking things up, but because I really use this time of year, you all, to think about what I have and what I need or any new products that I want to try. I did two runs, just so you know. Um, the second time is where I really was able to hit the lick. The first time it was too many teenagers. I don't, we need to start a change.org petition about all of these 12 year olds that are now at Sephora. Cause y'all are, y'all are in the way and I'm trying to handle big business. Either way, okay? <laughs> the first thing is a makeup product that I'm actually very excited about that I am wearing today. Let me get up a little bit closer. It is a new highlighter. I've been wanting to try a liquid highlighter for some time. It is by Rare Beauty, which I believe is Selena Gomez's company. I use this after I apply my blush at the top of my cheekbones, also on the bridge and the tip of my nose, sometimes my cupid's bow as well. But when you are a deep, dark, melanated chocolate goddess like I am, um, having something that is really going to pop on our skin and not kind of sit on top of our makeup can be hard. And this feel like it infuses well. It comes in, oh my gosh, probably about 10 shades. I got tired of swatching products, so I didn't even swatch this at the store, but I I think it's going to be a good one. And that is my only makeup product because I don't need any. I need nothing, <laughs> okay? But I did need to replenish some skincare. And the first thing is this Kale and Green Tea Spinach Vitamin Superfood Cleanser. This is the refill, as you can see, by Youth to the People. I am on their PR list, y'all, and I realized for the first time that they do refills. Now, in my opinion, this is a bit pricey, but I didn't check the ounces to kind of make sure I was getting the best bang for my buck. I was just trying to honestly be the most environmentally sound by not buying another glass bottle unnecessarily. But this was $68. And I was at the register like, what is what is $68? What is so expensive? Nevertheless, y'all, this cleanser and the lather on it, especially on days where I am wearing makeup as my second cleanser, is it for me. It is a clean product, and I have loved it since I was sent it as a PR gift. I also was due for a new moisturizer. I have kind of cycled through a few over the past six months or so, and I was completely out. And so I decided to give something new a try after telling the sales associate that I have very oily skin. She recommended the Pharmacy Daily Greens oil-free gel moisturizer and girl. Sometimes things that are oil-free, like the Dr. Murad uh, moisturizer, which I have used before, I love the results, but I don't like the application. It makes my face, it's hard to smooth, right? So it makes my face also feel a bit dry afterwards. Your face feels fully moisturized, but I wore this yesterday with nothing else. No BB cream, no setting pot, no nothing, no blurring balm. And I did not have that super oily T-zone that I had been getting lately. Pharmacy is another clean beauty company. I have used their makeup remover for years. I can recommend, honestly, y'all, the entire line of pharmacy products. But this one is a actually like a surprising brand new fave, and I've only had it for two days. Let's go to another new product. So there's a company that I had never heard of before called Salt and Stone, and they had their products on display. And anytime I see something that says Santal and Vetiver, honey, sign me up for a good time, okay? Now, what I wanted to try was the Bois de Balancourt deodorant, and they didn't have it, but they did have that fragrance in a deodorant, as well as, I think, a body wash and an actual perfume girl. So they call it a gel deodorant, which I love because it's not like a wet roll-on. I cannot stand that feeling, okay? It absorbs clear 
directly into the skin. Now, is it going to keep you from being musty? I don't know. Because I also thought to myself, what might happen is that must might come through and then the, the, the Santal and the Better Beer is activated. Use it at your own risk, friend. I've been using it for 24 hours. Um, and I'm good. But I don't know how your armpits are set up. You might need to hit it with a degree. Because I've had a couple days lately when I've been like, what is... You know what I'm saying? We've all been there. But nevertheless, I did want to give this a try. I would try this combination of fragrance by this company and really just about everything that they have. I am loving it so far once again. Let's hop back to products that I have used before. And I got the Sunday Riley Good Jeans, the all-in-one lactic acid treatment. This is a product that, y'all, is a holy grail. I have loved Sunday Riley since I first got into skincare. But what I can say is that I wait until the VIB sale or the Beauty Insider sale because Sunday Riley's products are an investment. Now, is it one that I think is worth it? Absolutely, I do. And my skin absolutely loves, loves lactic acid, lactic acid, excuse me, as a chemical exfoliant. I use this at night, although I do think it can maybe be used day and night, but I'm funny about using things that are too aggressive during the daytime, especially if I forget to put on sunscreen, that's not a good look. So I can recommend Sunday Riley and I could definitely recommend this, the lactic acid serum. And I did forget one makeup product. This is new. I actually went to go get the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer that Halicia, I know Lee, recommended. Her makeup is always so flawless. And I love that product, even though I have oily skin, but they were out of it. Talk about like a fan favorite. And so I decided to try something different. And this one is the Pore Eclipse Mattifying Primer. My first time wearing it today. I loved how it just mattified the natural oils on my hand in the store. Um, and so well, I'm excited to give this a try. And again, I'm wearing it today and I have not blotted my makeup at all. If you see a bit of shine, what it might be is the highlighter. So thus far, I think we are in good hands. And then for my birthday, my mom got me the Tom Ford Soleil Need Shimmery Body Shimmering Body Oil. She knows that I had been talking about the fragrance here on YouTube that I just got recently in a partnership or a PR gift from Macy's. That is also available at Sephora. I will link it down below. And so I wanted to include the body oil here because it smells, y'all, so absolutely divine. And if you want to just try out the product without making the full commitment to the fragrance, which is more, trying out some of the body products is a great idea. I know, for example, I've done that with my Delina body cream. And I love the body cream so much until I never felt a need to get the fragrance. The same thing with the Jo Malone Myrrh and Tonka body cream. So I have a lot of examples of times when I've gone for the body product instead of the full fragrance and it's worked out just fine for me. But the thing about this that I want you all to keep in mind is that the sparkles are kind of a white and you're not gonna put this on and look like a disco ball. So don't get too concerned, right? You're gonna see like a little faint hint of glitter here and there. What I love this for the most is the fact that it is a dry oil. And so because of that, it's not leaving you feeling greasy, but maybe a little bit more moisturized. It's actually seeping into your skin. If I was going out and about to brunch doing my thing, what I would actually do is take a shower while my skin was still kind of damp, put this on and let it like soak into my skin and then finish it off once I'm dressed with the fragrance. Highly, highly recommend. I, I'm just, I want to put this on my whole body head to toe right now. And my gift to myself for my birthday is this candle from Diptyque with the candle holder. Uh, again, stay tuned for the vlog because you will actually see me go down to Diptyque to the store in DC and Georgetown and pick this up. That store is impeccable. It is one of the best, I think, in the country outside of the flagship in Paris because of the size. And what they have there are a lot of like home goods. And what they told me is that the candle holder is a perfect investment because if you're someone like me and you're just very caught up in your candle burning evenly, I, I don't know. Let me tell you something. A bee in my bonnet, a biscuit being burned, 
is a candle that is unevenly burned. Now, there are major things happening in the world. I don't know why that sends me the way that it does, but child, I, I come undone at my core. And so having something like this helps me to just keep my nerves in order. That's how I'm justifying the price. Um, but nevertheless... <laughs> Roses is the candle that I chose to go with while I was down at the boutique. And this is the standard size. I think they make a size smaller that is before you get to the very tiny one, which basically operates as the travel size. On the base of the candle holder is diptyque embossed in. <coughs> And this simply fits perfectly on the inside. Obviously, for me, I will not always have a diptyque candle in here. But there's something about burning it, especially in the evening and how the light just kind of cascades out. It just makes me feel so wealthy. Not rich. I'm talking about wealthy, honey. Y'all, I've made a conscious decision not to go overboard with any luxury purchases this season. I don't need anything really. I mean, the pieces that I got are things that I love that I think are going to be seamlessly woven into my capsule wardrobe, which will be a video coming up very soon, if not the very next video that I release after this one. Um, and so for me, y'all know that I'm always trying to find inspiration. I do my closet clear outs. I make a shopping list, etc. It's the same formula every season. And so what I wanted to think about were a couple things. Number one, I felt like I was missing a heeled sandal that was fun and something that I could also wear to my epic lit and legendary soiree that is happening on April 19th at the Line Hotel in Washington, D.C. I hope you were on the list. If not, it might be closed, friend, because we are going to pack it out. It shall be lit and indeed legendary. Speaking of legendary, I had to go for a metallic sandal. Honey, <laughs> Diana Ross in a shoe, honey. It's not coming out. Yeah, that's what that is right there, that metallic. Now, let me tell you about something about Jimmy Choo. If you are a size 10 and above, you need to be down at Jimmy Choo and you want a, if you want a luxury sandal. I don't know who else is doing it this well. And I have gone on so many rants with you all about the lack of inclusivity as far as sizing is concerned at some of these brands. And as a true, a true 10 and a half, I am just having to embrace that at this age, at this season in my life, okay? 10s be trying it for me these days. 11s are sometimes too big. And so as a true 10 and a half, I need a 42 and if not a 43 in a closed toed shoe, okay? Don't let people tell you that a 42 is a size 12. It is absolutely not. With that, the rant is over. Jimmy Choo goes up to a size 43. I got these shoes in a 42. I cannot remember the name. I think it is a newer style. As you can see, they're very sleek, very simple. But what I love, honey, is that little, what is this? It's not quite a ball. It's like a little, mm, just a little mm -hmm, right there on the bottom. I also love, and this is what we're paying for. This is why we're here, y'all. The way that it's not a square toe, but do you see how the square, the toe is slightly angled? And it only makes sense because that's how our feet or our toes rather are also made. And so it also makes it so comfortable is it a little tight here? Yes, I ain't even gonna hold you. I have no reason to lie to you. It's too close to Sunday. But is it comfortable for a heel of this height? Absolutely. And I have been wearing them around the house to attempt to break them in here because it's really, it's just a matter of stretching. But one of the most comfortable and the best designer shoe purchases I have made in a very long time. And again, for me, it goes back to the brand itself, Jimmy Choo being the one and not the two for us girls who have an oversized 10 foot. I've never thought of myself as someone who is obsessive, but I have to admit when looking over here at my shoe wall, that there is a theme that is emerging and that is the role of metallics. 
I think that metallics are a neutral and it is a great way to just add a little pop of flair to an outfit. If you follow me over on social media, specifically on IG and on TikTok, then you saw me shopping down at Express. And I'll get to more of those pieces in just a minute. But the first thing I saw when I walked in the store were these. I have an aversion to round toe flats. We don't go together. But I think this trend towards flat shoes is exciting. I think it's exciting, y'all. In the same way that I'm in my comfort era with embracing my sneakers, my gazelles, my sambas, etc. That is true for the flat shoes. And a flat sling back with a pointed toe? At somebody's brunch, honey? I've tried, but I'm also comfortable. Yes. These are in a size... Uh, they're size 10, surprisingly, but they're comfortable. Um, as you can see, they have the pointed toe. It's like a slight arrow here, which I think just makes them look really cool as from a design aesthetic is concerned. It's a dorset, meaning you have this cut out here, the sling back in the back, and a square sole or a square back to the shoe and a little small heel. I mean, teeny tiny, that ain't even a half of an inch. If you are someone who likes to put on and to have your own pizzazz and flair for work, these with a pair of like black trousers or even like to add a pop to a pair of khakis, honey, you couldn't tell me nothing. You could not tell me nothing. And what I have gotten as far as fashion is concerned, I think about my old policy job. I used to work at a think tank, y'all. And God provides favor to so many people. As, as Don Staley said yesterday, shout out to the South Carolina Gamecocks uh, who won the NCAA Women's Championship. Uh, she, she, she called it uncommon favor. And I believe what's been provided to my former colleagues is a form of uncommon favor. Because if I knew then what I know now, the way I would have just made them feel bad about themselves, gliding to their office. So for you, sis, tell your coworkers when they go home tonight, pray and ask God for favor, because you about to put on this spring. And our last category is clothing, of course. It wouldn't be a politics and fashion video without the fashion. Uh, first up, let's talk about this bustier that I'm wearing because I picked this up in store. And I have, y'all, a pair of green, like, army fatigue style cargo pants that I'm trying this on with that I think the two together are going to be chef's kiss. Chef's kiss for sure. And that's what I had in mind when I saw this in the store. Bustiers, by the way, are a huge trend right now. I'm seeing metallics. I'm seeing bustiers. I'm seeing embellished tops. We'll get to all of those in this video. And uh, I grabbed this up so quickly. It is in a size 8 because, y'all, I am busty. But also because of how the bottom is cut, it cuts down to the top of my hips. And I thought the 6 was just too tight for that. But when I came home and looked it up online, it also comes in black. And now I'm like, well, I don't want the same thing in black, but honestly, y'all, I will make sure that both are linked down below. I love them both. I'm happy I did something that's different for me, which is this really cool kind of sage green. And I do think it's going to look good as almost like a color block situation for this spring. Um, but the black is nasty with them gold buttons because you already know a black and gold situation is my steeds. The next thing I got is this, which is just a very, it's going to blow me out so bad, y'all. A very simple, girl, act right. Crisscross neck with a keyhole, ribbed top. These are the kind of just fun basics that I feel like will transcend from spring to summer. Um, DC gets the true spring, and so... Any given day, the weather could be 50 or it could be 70. Who knows? This is clearly something to be worn on those warmer days unless I wanted to layer it with something else. But I had a similar top like this from 
um, Aritzia, which I know I love that shop. And it just was time to transition that one out and get something new. And when I went shopping at Express, I think everything was 40 or 50% off. So again, all links will be in the description box. But just as a great fun basic, I love this. Let's hop over to H&M because just yesterday, y'all, I picked up this jacket. And I saw this on the hanger twice because I went to H&M twice in the same weekend. And the second time I was like, well, let me just, let me just try this on. Because I think I saw Camille, Camille Darby. Hey girl, hey, if you're watching. I saw her try this on and like a try on reel. And I was like, that looks so cute on sis, but she's petite. And sometimes I get a little nervous about how things are going to look on me. I'm so tall. But, honey, in a large, and with these shoulder pads on this right here, the idea of a cropped varsity jacket with shoulder pads and then a neutral, girl, who working down there at H&M? Give them a raise. First of all, H&M's entire spring collection hit, y'all. I, I had actually hoped to haul some of those items for you, but everything I got did not fit me, and so it quickly got <laughs> sent back. However... This jacket, and they only had two left in the store, is great. If I can, I will link it with these H&M pieces. By the time the content creators get a hold of them, girl, they're gone. Because I think for a contemporary brand that has fashion forward pieces that we all kind of find something that we love, I would say the brands that I'm showing today are the ones. So your H&Ms, your Express. I'm about to get to costs in just a minute. Your Banana Republics are the ones to keep an eye out for. The last thing at H&M are a pair of earrings. And these were only $12.99, y'all. Um, the back has fallen off one. But let me just show you. And I'm going to actually try them on because I grabbed these in store as I was checking out. And I haven't even tried them on. But it looks like they could be super cute. Um, I'm just wearing today these Kenneth J. Lane earrings. They're clip-ons. I wish that these were clip-ons, just looking at how they're made, but whoop, I just went and got another back because I wanted something that was a little bit thicker to hold the weight of the earring. I like them. I think those are super cute and they're super lightweight too, y'all. And with something like this of what I'm wearing today, the round texture of the buttons and then the texture of the earrings and just a cute pair of denim or once again, those cargo pants. Keeping all of this, your clavicle, just keep that open. Keep that real open. Bust down your wrist. Mm -hmm. That could be super duper duper cute. That is my first pair of H&M costume jewelry that I've had in some time. So I can't tell you all how they are going to hold up long term but for $12.99 I thought it was worth it. Now let's hop over to costs. This is my birthday set y'all. Um, I saw this online and cost is very interesting to me because their pieces can be a little conservative, downright dowdy. Let me just be honest with you. So sometimes I just think that kind of Scandinavian cut does not do, it's not always very flattering on body types, certain body types. And I'm like, uh, not for me. But when it hits, it hits. And there's something about this being a sheer two-piece. It is a set, but sold separately. I'm going to get so much wear out of both pieces together and separately. And for the skirt at my height to be kind of like mid thigh, but to kind of cover you to a midi length with a bra, I wore this on my birthday by the way, it's sexy, but it's demure at the same time. It's sexy, but it's like, oh, what am I? Oh, okay, what is that? What am I look? Okay, look at the leg, oh wait, but it's just a lot of interest. It's almost an optical illusion, to be honest with you. I absolutely love it. Um, I would definitely wear this with a pair of heels to date night as a set, but I could also see it with a graphic tee tied in the front, up top, maybe a moto jacket and a pair of like combat boots or boots or even a sneaker on the bottom with the skirt. Like, 
it is definitely going to get its wear this spring. And because it is spring and because of the weather in the DC Metro on my birthday, April 4th, by the way, um, it was probably about in the evening 55 degrees or so, but I just put on like a light coat and I was absolutely fine with this, y'all. It is the best of what I think COS has to offer right now. Make sure you go when you check out COS. And COS, by the way, is H&M's big sister. Now, I need to go and exchange this next bustier. I got it in a size medium. I think that's like a bustier. Maybe a mix between a bustier and a long tube top. I'm not sure. But I got it in a size medium from Banana Republic. I'd ordered a few things from there. And this was the only one that I really loved. But I do want to go back and order some of their linen for summer, possibly. But girl, the fact that this has that ruching that slims you around the midsection. But it also is long. So kind of like a maxi length bustier. A little bit longer than the one I'm wearing today. I love. It also comes in black. I think with my um, silk pants. So you don't want anything because of how long this comes down. That's going to bulk you out in the midsection. So those silk flat front pants with the slits on the side from Anita Bean. And a very cute flat sandal. And you just out at the farmer's market, you know, smelling the, literally smelling the roses, okay? Picking up the apples, just taking a bite. <laughs> but you know how the fruit be looking real good? You just be like, <clears throat> so, I don't know. This gives me bougie farmer's market, okay? I love this. I just had to get it in a smaller size because it is a little bit too big across the band. Unlike some of these other brands, y'all, Banana Republic still, in my opinion, runs pretty true to size to maybe even a little large. Um, some of these younger brands are ones that cater to a younger audience. You'd be like, that ain't nobody large, girl. Zara, stop. Zara will have me in a triple X out here. No shade, no tea. I embrace all body types. But what I know about myself is that that's just, you're not going to convince me that that is the average understanding of sizes across the world, Zara. However, I find that on the opposite end, Banana still runs true to size, if not big, because I would not get a size small in anything else. But if you're interested in this, go down. Now, these pants, y'all, just came in the mail. Um, they are a brand called Charo. I got them in a size large. They are super stretchy, as you can see. Well, I'm assuming they're stretchy, y'all. Um, what I like about them is I wanted like a sheer pant, something to replace my Dries Van Nine pants that I had years ago, y'all. And I just, I, I was hoes. I just, I wore them things out. So I wanted to replace it and I saw Bami Chanel, she tried on this fit and she had on these sheer pants and I was like, oh, I like that. And so I ended up with a far fetch credit trying to figure out how I could replicate it. And so these are the pants that I felt like were within my budget and that may be the best fit for me as well as the length. We're trying these on together here for the first time. So again, I don't know if I am going to keep these, but I feel like they were very fun for spring and hopefully you can see in my try on but there's like a bloomer on the inside and then the rest of it on the bottom is sheer and the last item is another piece of luxury specifically a ready to wear as you can see it is this Zimmerman two-piece I love the look of this I love this beautiful kind of camel color and the fact that it is in silk shout out to Tiffany Stamp who is my essay down at Neiman I actually have never liked anything by Zimmerman usually it's way too frilly way too feminine for me but surprise surprise the joke's on me when she showed me this and she showed me this together I was shook nasty I was like this is actually giving me kind of like the elevated vibe that I am so into and if you saw my last accessories video then what you know is I have the song Mont Luna bag in the color ivory and I also had the ivory shoes that I wore this with that I think are just 
together like peanut butter and jelly and obviously a pair of silk wide leg pants and a silk wrap top. These are in my mind the kind of wardrobe essentials that I'm never going to get tired of. I wore this when I spoke at the Fashion File Women's History event. Uh, I was on a panel with the CEO of Fashion File who I absolutely adore as well as the president of the Women's History Museum and also one of the editors at Elle and a woman named Elizabeth Holmes who is a writer. And so I felt like I was in great company. I felt like I looked good. I smelled good. I spoke well. I mean, it's up. It's 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 up my G <laughs> is there was something about just gliding in with a nice kind of flowy pair of pants that made me really really excited as well you know I was comfortable I wasn't wearing a suit and I still felt stylish at the same time I think that's it y'all I'm looking around and I'm really really hoping that I have not forgotten anything if I have you got to follow me over on social y'all to make sure that you see these items in real life in real time and also don't forget my private community the politics and fashion tribe where we explore a lot of fun concepts we have our live chats and I also do a good amount of unboxings there so that they are the first ones that see new items that come in to my closet and don't forget to subscribe to my channel because once again if i have forgotten it here trust me it's gonna pop up in my blog that i am concurrently filming but will be released at a later date that is all for now good people i will see y'all on april 19th down at the institution if you are on the rsvp list have a wonderful day and i will see y'all across the internet